Hey, welcome back to Flying S Models. Chad here again. I appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at the, the XF4U1 Corsair prototype conversion offered by 109 Ace. The Vought XF4U Corsair is one of those prototype airplanes that most modelers really want to have in their collection. I've been wanting one for a long time and thought about scratch building one in 148 and uh, been gathering materials off and on and never really got around to it. I was on eBay the other day and I, I saw a conversion set offered by 109 Ace and I think he only sells on eBay. And the pictures were a little bit grainy and I was struggling to determine, you know, kind of the overall quality of it from the pictures, but it was reasonably priced and so I decided to pick it up. I got it in the other day and uh, I thought I'd do a quick review of it and kind of show you what to expect, maybe with a little bit better image quality. And then also I'll talk a little bit more about a different way to go about the conversion that a modeler uh, may prefer. So let's go ahead and see what was in the box. It looks like it includes a lot of different resin pieces and uh, a vacuum form canopy and windscreen set, and also had a single piece wing that was cast. So since this is out, first let's go ahead and just take a look at this up close the first thing I notice here is gone ahead and assembled the wing from the, the Tamiya kit the assembly is a little bit kind of off in my opinion there's a step here on this wing and a, a reverse sort of step on this side that's okay no big deal nothing that a little bit of sanding wouldn't help out maybe rescribe uh, but that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because you can see here a little bit of short shot on the wheel well and so it's very thin you can almost see the blue from the background here through the wing piece so if you tried to sand that out you'd probably uh, kind of sand right through the top part of the wing looks like he's left the oil cooler intakes off they were slightly different on the xf4u but uh, he's left those off and probably cast as separate pieces but uh, i don't know if he's using a uh, pressure pot or a vacuum pot but it looks like the these intakes have a lot of uh, air bubbles in them the details okay and once you put the intake covers on maybe they'd work out all right but that could be an issue uh, you can see the same thing in the wheel wells uh, probably not a big deal but you can see a few little excess resin pieces that might be a little hard to uh, to clip off a little bit of an issue here on the oil cooler exhaust you can see this side is cast pretty nice uh, the detail kind of got lost over here other issues are some air bubbles on the wing leading edge uh, and then another short shot here in the casting kind of you can see here uh, it's a big gap that would have to be filled in the one thing he did do was added these little bombay doors here it was kind of interesting the xf4u had a option for uh, 10 small bomblets that were going to be used for like anti-aircraft. I guess the idea was to fly above a bomber formation or something like that, open up the doors and drop these little bombs on the, on the formation. So he did include those. Those aren't part of the standard Tamiya kit, obviously. So uh, that's a good feature. Let's take a look at what's inside. The first thing I notice here is the fuselage is cast in three different pieces. Issues with the quality of casting here, you can see some just overall the detail in the wheel bay kind of got uh, kind of got obscured in this part here. Another short cast or short shot section here. Some air bubbles that would have to be finished. This part concerns me a little bit. It's kind of got like a like a hump, uh, like a, almost like a whale hump here that doesn't look quite accurate if I compared it to the overall outline. Uh, that would probably need to be sanded down and filled in to make it a little more accurate. He hasn't modified, it doesn't look like, the tail. Uh, the uh, prototype Corsair had a blunt tail at the end, and so that would have to be modified as well. Um, and then here is the forward section of the fuselage. Overall, the shape looks about right, but some issues in the moldings here uh, you can see a, a hump here and again it's pretty thin so it might cause an issue if you try to dis tried to sand that down a couple things that are concerning is finishing the interior might be a little bit challenging to paint it the way that it's molded as a single piece here kind of getting in here with your paintbrush a little bit of a air bubbles here that uh, you would need to be filled on the top side the other big issue that i see is that it's a three-piece 
uh, fuselage assembly. You can see here the made up is would be kind of tricky. You would need to stretch it, I think, and it looks like alignment might be a little bit of an issue here to get everything aligned, but that might work okay. But a three-piece fuselage assembly would be kind of tricky, uh, especially for an inexperienced modeler. I know they probably market this for those that have uh, more experience though. Let's just throw out the other parts that are in the conversion set here. The cowling looks like probably one of the better parts, although the cooling fins are interesting. They're not quite uh, square. You see they're a little bit longer here and shorter here. He did mold them with the full 360 degree cooling flaps, so that's a, that's a good feature accurate for the uh, early uh, prototype Corsair. Let's see. Looks like he's got the fuselage bulkhead from the Tamiya kit. I don't really see any differences here between the Tamiya part and this part other than maybe it was chopped off here, but it looks like he just copied the kit part for use in this conversion. Here are those intake covers that I mentioned, and then it looks like he has created new landing gear doors that uh, would be more accurate for the prototype. So that's, that's pretty nice, I like that, both the inner and outer gear doors. And then one of the other better features here is he's actually modified the flaps to be a little bit longer and more accurate for the uh, prototype Corsair. Uh, it looks like what he did, you can see the little hump here, he just took the standard kit part and added an extension on the end. So that's overall pretty useful. And the castings are pretty decent. A few air pockets here, but I think that would work fine. The vacuum form canopy here, uh, it looks nice and clear, and it looks to be representative of the early uh, Corsair prototype. You can see he does have a spare uh, windscreen and also a new vacuum form sort of birdcage canopy here. Now, those look pretty nice. So there's the 109 Ace uh, Corsair prototype conversion set for the Tamiya kit. Overall impressions are a little mixed, uh, to be honest. Uh, while it was inexpensive and uh, generally the shape with the exception of this uh, hump here on the spine looked to be uh, relatively accurate to me. Uh, the quality of the castings leaves a little to be desired in my opinion and uh, I really couldn't recommend this kit to all but the most experienced modelers but if you're that experienced, you're likely going to be okay taking a different approach. So I think I'll take a little bit of time here to, to talk through a, a different approach. So in my opinion, if you're skilled enough to tackle a 109 Aces Corsair conversion, um, then you're going to be more than skilled enough to tackle a different approach to that conversion. So here's what I'm talking about. I've basically taken two Tamiya Corsair kits. In this case, I'm using the Birdcage Corsair, but you can use either version. And I'm going to show you how to cut the kit and modify it to create the XF4U. Uh, I'll be following the instructions that were published years ago uh, in Fine Scale Modeler and written by Paul Boyer. Um, he did it in 172nd scale, and I think other folks um, through the years have done this in 148th. I haven't seen anybody in 132nd, but it would be a cool project to do in 132nd scale. So I've outlined here, or marked on this fuselage, uh, what Paul shows in the instructions about the cuts that need to be made. And I've labeled them uh, 1 through 7. Now the first cut here is right along the firewall line, basically cut that off and then follow that by another cut here, number two, that's roughly 3 16ths of an inch behind cut one. This actually shortens the fuselage a little bit uh, from the wing leading edge to the firewall. Number three starts to actually reconfigure the cockpit section and move it forward to be representative of the prototype configuration. So you basically cut at three, followed by a small cut at four here, and then a cross cut at five, which will detach this piece, and then cut at six, and then remove this section here. When you remove this section here, this piece here that has the cockpit combing can actually be glued forward to where that line that was number six cut would actually be glued in at the number three location. This is basically what you wind up with when you do that. You can see here on the reverse side, 
where those cuts were made right here and here. Now I've gone ahead and put a little bit of uh, cockpit sidewall detail in here so it's kind of disguised that cut but you can get the basic effect. The reason why you would need two kits is because or basically a spares kit is because you'll need this piece for both the right and left fuselage half and you'll need two of them. On the normal Tamiya kit it sits right here but once you make the modification the cockpit is going to be forward so you're going to actually take a second one of these and you're going to glue it right here and it'll it'll actually serve as the rear uh, bulkhead for the prototype configuration and I'll show you what that looks like here from the back side you can see here's normally where that uh, turtle decking or whatever they call that piece would be and then I've actually glued in a second piece to, to move the cockpit or to align with the cockpit moving forward. Now once that's all done, you'll have to sand everything down, fill in a few seams. You can use that filler that I talked about, which is uh, CA with dental resin. That works fantastic for this because you're gonna be doing a little bit of rescribing and that filler is perfect for rescribe applications. So once you have that done, you just come back in and rescribe the details that would be consistent with the prototype Corsair. And the last cut is cut number seven. That's an easy cut. It's just taken off a small portion of the tail. So there's the cuts that need to be made. And then just for fun, I'll align, so you can kind of see here, I'll align the original Tamiya fuselage with the prototype modifications. You can see here how much further forward the cockpit was in the prototype configuration and then how much shorter the firewall was from the wing leading edge uh, to that point. I've actually completed the initial work for both fuselage halves. I haven't come back in here and put the cockpit sidewall detail on yet but I can show you here, once you made these two fuselage halves together, you kind of real easily have the appropriate fuselage modifications, which are the most difficult uh, for the prototype Corsair. To me, this is far more effective and far easier to do than tackling the 109 ACE conversion. Had the quality on 109 ACE's conversion set been a little bit better, uh, and it had not been maybe three pieces for the fuselage modifications, uh, it would have been uh, my preferred method to go that approach. But I think I'll stick with this uh, method here and probably from a cost perspective, it's comparable because I think you can get both of these kits, two kits for about uh, $20 a piece. And I think that I paid about $28 or $30 for the 109 ACE conversion set plus $20 for the single kit. So a little bit more to go with the resin conversion set versus doing it yourself. The other modifications for the wing to include the flaps and the uh, undercarriage doors, uh, those are relatively easy. The cowling modifications are also relatively easy. You, you just need, if you're modifying the full 360 cowling flaps, you'd have to modify this section right here and then use the Tamiya parts uh, with those modifications. You'll have to, uh, or I'll have to identify uh, where we'll put the machine guns because on the prototype there were two machine guns come firing through uh, the cylinders and the engine. Those are easy to identify and mark. The wing modifications will be relatively simple. I would have to fill in some of the machine gun covers here. Uh, also, the prototype only had two machine guns in each wing rather than three, so you'll have to fill in the outer machine gun hole. Uh, and then, of course, we'd have to add in those uh, little bomblet uh, doors on the bottom part of the wing. Uh, easy enough, though. So this is one of those uh, pick your poison kind of things. You know, you can go the route of the 109 ACE conversion and uh, spend a lot of time and headache uh, fixing the quality of the resin castings and maybe some of the shape problems, uh, paying a little bit more money. Uh, or you can go ahead and uh, tackle some of this yourself, which is going to require a little bit more surgery to the Tamiya kit parts. 
uh, but in my opinion, I think you're gonna wind up with a better result and probably a far less headache to, to get there. I hope this kit review was helpful. I do wanna uh, say thanks to 109 Ace Models for for being bold and tackling the prototype Corsair conversion. Uh, I just wish I could uh, recommend it a little more strongly. I do wanna make sure to give credit to Tommy Thomason, who posted a really excellent article over on Tailhook Topics on the Corsair prototype and the differences between it and the later production variants. Make sure to check that out. I included a link to that article in the video description below. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and have a good one.